Hi, this is Diana. Bright Knowledge Instance give you one thing that you can do today to move your creativity ahead. And today I want to talk about mastery. What is mastery? It's a lot less complicated than it might seem. It's basically taking something from short-term memory and moving it into long-term memory. Long-term memory meaning that you can recall the thing, so for instance a musical song, at will and therefore you can work on that song at will. You have a huge amount of artistic freedom then. So this is true mastery. How do we move things from short-term memory to long-term memory? It's actually quite simple. Um, and it sounds a little unromantic, but I'm going to give you something towards the end that will spice it up a great deal. The key is to work in small chunks and to repeat those chunks. Why small chunks? Well, our short-term memory can only hold a, a surprisingly small number of things at once, anywhere from three to nine items, they generally say. So there are outliers, of course, on either end, but a short number. And if you think of all the things we do as musicians or other types of artistry, think about time signature, dynamics, fingering, actual notes, uh, phrase shape, we could go on. Um, those are many items at once. So when we're talking about a small chunk, it looks like anywhere from three to nine items. So that might only be three to nine notes, because even within a note, there's the timing of the note, there's fingering of the note. One note is not just one thing. So breaking down into small chunks means incredibly small chunks, much smaller than you might think, and then repeating them. As you repeat this small chunk, that's when it starts moving into the long-term memory side of the ledger. And that means you're going to consciously be able to recall it the next day and work with it even deeper. If we try to work on too many things at once, basically our mind gets blown and we can't remember anything. And there's nothing wrong with you when that happens. It's just your short-term memory only holds a certain amount of things. And so if you've stuffed too many things into that short-term memory, there's no chance of it turning into the long-term memory. Now, you've got your small chunk. You're repeating it. Is that boring? Oh my goodness, you know, the, the killer of creativity. No, it's not. Let me give you a reframe. And it's one that I use all the time for when I'm working on something small to make it fascinating. There's an ancient phrase, as above, so below. This phrase is thousands of years old. Uh, it also goes the other way, as below, so above. And it means that as we observe something small, it's actually like a microcosm of the greater world. And when we think about certain things from the past, like the ancient sign for the for medical stuff, so it's like the rod and then the two snakes circling around, that is a very ancient symbol. When they did DNA research and they were able to actually see the shape of DNA, it's exactly the same as the ancient symbol for health. So our very DNA is a reflection of that symbol. So as below, so above. This means that when you look into a small chunk, there's actually a huge amount of information, huge amount of wisdom and mystery embedded in it. As you look in your small chunks today, I would love you to look at it from as many angles as you can. What artistically is this small chunk saying? What is this chunk saying technically? What kind of inspiration is this chunk giving you? How can you learn and memorize it on an ever deeper level? And then let's bring in the fifth essential element in my system, which is community. How can you share this knowledge with others? When you use these five filters of the essential elements, which I'll talk about another time, then you get a very complete picture and you get to see as above, so below. So try this today. Small chunks repeated deeply. Bye.